recording now. And again, as we said, this is the Endow Kentucky um, Tax Credit Overview, and we welcome you to this program. Um, so we have a couple of objectives for this webinar. Our first objective is that, of course, we're going to explore the Endow Kentucky Tax Credit Program, what that looks like. And by the time you leave this webinar, we want you to be able to talk to your donors about that program um, and so that they can understand it. So that our, those are our objectives for the day. Um, before we get into the Endow Kentucky Tax Credit, um, Jerry Roll from the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky wanted to get, just provide um, an overview of the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky as a community development foundation. And so, Jerry, if you want to go ahead and share um, thank, what you want to say. Thank there. you, Donna. Um, and I'll start by thanking Jennifer and Heather for um, their generous um, willingness to, to help us out today by sharing their knowledge around the Endow Kentucky Tax Credit Program. I'm just going to be very brief. Um, the C Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky is a nationally an accredited community foundation. Um, we are located in Hazard, Kentucky, and we have, along with our traditional community foundation um, work that we do with donors and donor um, advisors, we also have um, components of our community foundation that do capacity building across our communities in southeastern Kentucky, many of which don't have a lot of capacity to um, work with philanthropy and work with charitably minded individuals in the ways that traditional community foundations in more urban centers have been able to do. So we have um, all of these affiliates you see across the bottom of this chart working in and around their local communities to um, provide philanthropic services and donor services and community-based capacity for, um, to work with philanthropy and also um, public grants, as well as the Appalachian Impact Fund, which is a regional fund that does impact investing and grant making for community development all across the region. Um, but for the purposes of today's presentation, the thing to understand is that the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky is eligible to receive, um, to help donors receive the tax credit and through our office in Hazard and through any of our affiliates. And I'm just gonna pass that on to Heather and Jennifer and let them tell you how that works. All right, thank you, Jerry, for that. Um, so um, our guest presenters, as we said, are Heather Cash, who is the Vice President for uh, Development and Stewardship at the Community Foundation of Louisville, and Jennifer Fust Rutherford, who is the Director of Gift Planning at the Community Foundation of Louisville. Um, Heather and Jennifer are both attorneys and they have worked in private practice for many years before joining the Community Foundation. Heather is originally from a small town in Western Kentucky. She received her undergraduate degree from Center College and her law degree from the University of Louisville's Brandeis School of Law. Jennifer is a Louisville native, um, received her graduate degree from Indiana University School of Public and Environmental Affairs, and also received her law degree from U of L's Brandeis School of Law. Heather has been at the Community Foundation for four and a half years, and Jennifer joined the foundation two years ago. So welcome to Jennifer and to Heather. And so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and have Jennifer share hers so that we can move forward with their presentation. Thanks, Donna. Um, I'm actually going to share my screen and drive the PowerPoint for Jennifer and I, so bear with me here and I will get that going. Okay. Um, well, like, I've, like Donna said, we are really excited, Jennifer and I are really excited to share with you some information today about the Endow Kentucky Tax Credit Program. Um, I'm going to be spending the first 10 minutes or so giving some background and an overview of how the program works, and then Jennifer will get more into the details of how an Endow Kentucky gift can be used to benefit your community and how the application process works. Um, before we actually get into the content, we do need to do a quick disclaimer. So just keep in mind that this information we're presenting is meant to familiarize you 
with the Endow Kentucky Tax Credit Program and process. This is not tax, financial, or legal advice. We always encourage you to consult with your financial professionals to decide if this tax credit is right for you or your clients. So this credit was created back in 2010 by the Kentucky Legislator. Um, the statute where you can find the actual language is KRS 141.438. And the statute basically allows for Kentucky taxpayers to get a tax credit of up to $10,000 if they make a gift to a permanent endowment fund at a qualified community foundation. This credit is an addition to your state deduction. So you're getting both a tax credit and a charitable deduction. And remember, a deduction is good because it reduces your adjustable gross income basically the income you're taxed on. But a credit reduces your tax bill dollar for dollar. So let's just say if you happen to owe the Kentucky Department of Revenue $5,000 in taxes, a tax credit in the amount of $5,000 can reduce your tax bill down to zero. But again, this credit only applies to gifts made to permanently endowed funds at qualified community foundations. It doesn't apply if you make a gift directly to a charity, and it doesn't apply if you make a gift to a fund that isn't permanently endowed. Now, when Kentucky established this in 2010, they were following other states that also had this type of tax credit. Montana was actually the leader in the first state that had this tax credit program. Um, there are only a handful of states that have implemented this program, so we really are lucky that it's available for generous individuals in Kentucky. Um, the goal of this program was to build wealth in all of Kentucky's communities, but especially rural communities, to ensure that these areas have a source of income to help support their citizens' quality of life, both now and for future generations. When the program was started, the legislator initially set aside $500,000 per year for these credits, but that amount was raised to $1 million in 2016. So now every year, there are $1 million in credits available for people who wanna take advantage of this tax credit. The Endow Kentucky program has been very popular and very successful over the last 10 years. There are about nine community foundations across the Commonwealth of Kentucky and they all participate in this tax credit program and definitely market it very heavily to their donors. Over the last 10 years, this program has resulted in over $35 million in gifts to the different communities across our Commonwealth. And it really is inspiring to know that all of these gifts are going to permanent endowment funds that are going to benefit our communities forever. At the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky, I know that there are many permanent endowment funds that have been created over the years to support specific nonprofits, affiliate foundations, and different geographic areas. Jennifer is going to give you some examples of these types of funds in just a little bit, but they range from funds that support particular counties and geographic areas to funds that support broad interests like education and children, or even specific funds, um, specific funds that support specific organizations like the Rotary Club and 4-H. The great thing about establishing a fund or giving to a fund at a community foundation is that it really can support whatever charity or whatever cause you as the donor care about. So just keep that in mind. And then lastly, this Endow Kentucky program is in very high demand, which is another indicator of its success. As I mentioned earlier, there are $1 million in credits available every year. Um, this $1 million in credits is used up on the very first day the Revenue Department starts accepting applications, which is July 1st. Jennifer is going to talk more in a little bit about this process and this deadline, but just keep in mind that if you want to take advantage of this tax credit, you do need to get your application to the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky very soon because July 1st will be here before you know it and that is a really important deadline to remember. So now I'm gonna go through in more detail the exact requirements of the program and how the tax credit works. First, <clears throat> to take advantage of this program, you have to be a Kentucky taxpayer paying state income taxes. Now both individuals and corporations can apply and receive this credit. 
So it's not limited to just individuals. Any entity, business or individual, can apply for the credit. You just have to be paying Kentucky income taxes. Also, both individuals of a married couple can participate. So each individual could get that $10,000 maximum credit, which means as a couple, you could have $20,000 in tax credits. As I mentioned earlier, to be eligible for the credit, you have to make a gift to a permanent endowment fund at a qualified community foundation. So again, a gift to your church, to your favorite nonprofit, to your college or university is not eligible for this tax credit. <clears throat> Permanently endowed funds are invested for long-term growth and they typically only distribute a small portion each year to the nonprofit or the cause that they are meant to support. And the point of these funds is to provide that steady stream of income forever. And then, as I mentioned, these endowment funds must be housed at a qualified community foundation, which, of course, the Foundation for Appalachia, Kentucky is a qualified community foundation. Now, the Revenue Department recognized that community foundations are uniquely positioned to handle and manage endowment funds, and that community foundations have a history of longevity to ensure that these endowment funds that are receiving the Endow Kentucky gifts will continue in perpetuity. Now, the tax credit is 20% of your gift, and as I mentioned, the maximum credit available is $10,000 per taxpayer. So if you want to be eligible for that $10,000 maximum credit, then you would be making a $50,000 gift. So $50,000 is really the maximum gift you would want to make to be able to get that $10,000 credit. $10,000 is 20% of $50,000. Now, there is no minimum amount to give. You can give any amount you would like, but just keep in mind that the credit is only 20% of your gift. So a gift of $100 is only going to give you a credit of $20. So, but you can give as little as you'd like. Just keep in mind that the credit is only 20% of your gift. Lastly, you don't automatically get this credit just by making your gift. You have to apply first and your gift has to be approved by the revenue department before you make it. So you have to get that approval from the revenue department before you make your gift. Now I'm gonna go over a couple of more things and then Jennifer will get more into the details of this application process. Um, keep in mind that you get the state tax credit in the year you make your gift. If the taxpayer can't use the whole credit in the year of the charitable gift, you can carry the credit forward for up to five years. Now the credit is not refundable. So let's just say if you owed $2,000 in state taxes and you got a $5,000 tax credit because you made an Endow Kentucky gift, that means you reduce that tax bill down to zero and you still have $3,000 left of a credit. Now you can't ask the state to cut you a $3,000 check. It's not refundable, but you can carry that $3,000 credit forward for the next five years. So if you had a tax bill of $2,000 in the next year, you could use 2,000 of that $3,000 credit, and then you'd have another $1,000 to carry forward in, in a future year. Now, earlier I said you get the state tax credit and the state deduction. This is true for your Kentucky return, but the IRS just passed a regulation last June, in June of 2019, saying that if you received a state tax credit for a charitable gift, you have to reduce your federal deduction by the amount of the credit you've received. Now you still get your federal deduction, it just has to be reduced by the amount of your credit. So here's an example. Let's say you make an Endow Kentucky gift of $5,000, that would make you eligible for a $1,000 state tax credit. Now on your state return, you can claim a $5,000 deduction and a $1,000 credit, but on your federal return, you have to reduce that $5,000 gift by your credit, which is $1,000, which means your federal deduction is only $4,000. So it's still a great deal. This development may, may make it a little less appealing, but it is still a great benefit because like I said earlier, a tax credit reduces your tax bill dollar for dollar. 
And a deduction is good. It reduces your taxable income, but it's not quite as powerful as that tax credit. Now, remember, if you have additional questions about how the credit and deduction affects your specific tax return, make sure to consult with your personal tax professional advisor. Okay, now I'm going to hand it off to Jennifer to, talk, Jennifer to talk a little bit more about the types of funds at the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky that can accept an Endow Kentucky gift and more details about this application process. Thank you, Heather. So the first question you may want to know is how you can utilize an Endow Kentucky gift at the Community Foundation that you are making your contribution to. There's really two different ways, um, but these two options provide the ability to support numerous initiatives. So the first option is that with a gift of $2,500 or more, a donor can create a new permanently endowed fund at the Foundation for Appalachia, Kentucky. As the, the, the um, affiliate members on our call know, those funds can be set up to support any cause that is important to a donor. And Heather mentioned a number of them. They could be a geographic region, they can be particular nonprofits, they can be a new affiliate fund if that's what they would like. But that new fund is permanently endowed and it carries out their charitable legacy forever. The key is that it has to be permanently endowed. Uh, that's the only way that the gift can be eligible for Endow Kentucky and the donor can receive the tax credit. The second option is for a gift of any amount. So any existing endowment fund at the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky can accept new additional gifts into it, and that can be in any amount. On our next slide, we look at a number of those funds. Um, you'll recognize that the first two, three, seven, seven, I think, are all affiliate funds. For those who don't know what, it, what an affiliate fund is, that's a fund that benefits particular counties they have um, a local advisory board who stays in contact with the donors and the nonprofit partners in that area. And they make grants to address the needs that are particular to those counties. So a gift to an affiliate fund is a gift that allows the community to have resources to address the needs that they see now, but it also gives them the ability to address resources down the road that they can't know are coming up. So that's a great gift to make. Now, a lot of the other funds, these are, again, just a sampling of the funds at Appalachian Kentucky. Um, these funds are for particular nonprofits like um, the Perry County 4-H, um, the Animal Shelter. The reason why these are helpful to the nonprofit, nonprofits is not just because they provide them with annual predictable support, but they also help them to attract donations from other donors because the donors see a stable, fiscally responsible organization that is, it has staying power. It's gonna be around for a number of years because it has this endowment fund to help support it. So they feel more comfortable making a gift to the fund too. So one donor's gift to create or add to this fund can attract more gifts down the road for the same nonprofit. So they can help them in a couple of ways. Now let's take a look at the process. So this is the process for making an Endow Kentucky gift, and you can really think of it as three main steps. The first step is to send the completed application to the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky by June 30th, 2020. That will allow them to file the application with the Department of Revenue um, on July 1st when the application period opens. That application just asks for basic information about the taxpayer, they uh, state the amount of gift that they would like to make and identify the community foundation that they're gonna be making the gift to. When the donor submits this application, that is all they do. They do not also make their gift. They cannot make their gift at that time. They have to submit the application and then wait. And that doesn't sound like a big, idea, big deal, but there's, there's quite a period in between and many donors are familiar with how deadline driven this process is. So they start to feel like they're missing something and they get nervous about it, but they can't do anything until the second step. So the second step is when the Department of Revenue sends out letters of preliminary approval of the gift. This usually happens in about mid-July. Only after that gift can the donor make, make their gift. Um, only after they get the letter can the donor make the gift. And this is actually a triggering event from the date of that letter, the donor has 30 days to make their gift to the community foundation that they indicated on their application. Um, usually it is mid-July, everyone who applied receives this letter from the Department of Revenue via certified mail, um, and then they need to make their gift. 
The gift can be a check, it can be stock, it can be a transfer from their IRA, um, a qualified charitable distribution. The one thing to remember is that gifts of stock and transfers from the IRA, those take a little bit longer. So if a donor is going to be using that form for a gift, they probably ought to let their broker know or let their IRA administrator know that they're gonna be making this gift sometime mid-July, late July, and that it's gonna to need to happen quickly. It has to be within that 30 days or it will not be eligible for Endowed Kentucky. The first step in that process is the application. And I thought we could look at that a little more closely. So I know this is, the writing on this is very tiny. You probably can't read it, but I just wanted you to see how simple the form is. It's just this one page. The Department of Revenue updates it each year, most years. Um, you'll see up in the upper right hand corner, they've updated it for this year. Uh, 2020 is on this one. The basic information about the taxpayer goes at the top. If they're an individual, they're going to put in their social security number. If they're a company, they're going to use their tax ID number. Below that, they're going to put in the amount of the gift that they would like to make and then the corresponding credit that would be, uh, el they would be eligible for, and that's 20%. So that's capped, like Heather said, at $10,000. So the most they would ever fill in for the gift amount is $50,000. Below that, they're going to put in the name of the community foundation that they want to utilize. This is one of our forms, so it has the community foundation of Louisville in it, but they would fill in the community foundation, the foundation for Appalachian Kentucky, um, and below that, the fund that they would like their gift to go into. So it can either be one of the new funds we just discussed, or it can be a gift to an existing fund. They would put that underneath. There are actually two signature lines on this. The first is required for the application to be complete. For it to be processed, they have to sign when that first X is. The second X, it authorizes the Department of Revenue to share with the community foundation that's been identified earlier up in the form, to share information with them about the preliminary gift approval so that they know the date that that letter went out. And because there's that 30-day deadline that's, that's pretty hard and fast, it helps the community foundation help the donor make sure that they get their gift in within the deadline. So everybody that wants to participate can make that cutoff. So that is an, an excellent, um, it's an excellent block for you to let your donors know they have the option to sign, but it can really help them if they do. Okay, so we keep saying preliminary approval and you're probably wondering why it's preliminary. And it's because there's that set amount, that $1 million that's available each year for the credits. And there is such high demand, there are so many applications that the Department of Revenue usually cannot give everybody the full 20% for tax credit for their gift. Instead, they usually approve the credits on a pro rata basis. So the initial preliminary approval last year, I think was about 76%. And that starts to get Kind of confusing, so an example with big round numbers that hopefully I won't mess up um, might make it a little bit easier. So let's say a donor wants to make a $10,000 gift and that would correspond to a $2,000 tax credit that they would be eligible for. Let's say the preliminary approval amount, the pro rata amount is 80%. That means they would be approved to make a gift of $8,000, which corresponds to a state tax credit of $1,600. So it's a little bit less than what they applied for, but it's, it's still across the board, it's an 80% approval rating. Now, that said, not everybody who applies to make an endowed Kentucky gift ultimately will. Sometimes they'll miss the 30-day deadline or um, they'll make a gift in a lesser amount. They definitely should not apply to make the gift unless they're serious about making an endowed Kentucky gift because it is in such demand um, that they need to only do it if they really mean it, but circumstances change and sometimes they won't make the gift at all. So those credit amounts that aren't used go back into the pool and it allows the Department of Revenue to reallocate the remaining credits to the donors who have made their full gift amount. So if we go back to the example of the $10,000 gift, if that donor chose instead of writing their check for $8,000 to write their check for the full amount, the $10,000, even though they aren't approved for the full $10,000, if there's then another reallocation of 5% more, they would be approved for a gift of $8,500 and their state tax credit would go up to $1,700. And there's no um, guarantee there will be a reallocation, 
but it's, it's kind of been the rule in the past few years. So that's a decision that every donor needs to make when they write their check. Are they gonna write it for the amount of their preliminary approval or are they gonna write it for the full amount? All right, the next step in the process, or actually, let's look at all the steps again. So this is so deadline driven that it's worth looking at the major events one more time. So June 30th, 2020, if donors can get their applications to the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky by that date, that allows them to sort of troubleshoot, make sure all of the required information is in there, and also follow up with any donors that they were aware wanted to participate, but maybe they didn't receive their application yet. Um, donors can, of course, they can submit their application to the Department of Revenue on their own as well, um, but that that extra insurance that uh, supplying it to the Community Foundation first gives can help the application get through um, in case there's something that needs to be remedied. So July 1st, 2020 is the date the Department of Revenue opens up the application acceptance period. And as Heather said, the full million dollars of state tax credits are effectively gone on that first day because there are so many applications. Um, any applications that the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky receives, they'll submit as soon as that, that application period opens. Then in mid-July, as we talked about, the department sends out the letters uh, preliminarily approving, preliminarily approving the uh, gift amount, and that starts that 30-day clock when the donor is going to need to make their gift. And remember, if they sign the second signature line on the application, the community foundation that they're using can help make sure that gift gets in in a timely manner. Within 10 days of the community foundation receiving the gift, they provide proof of the gift to the Department of Revenue with a form called a schedule and DAO. The department then reviews that, that form, verifies that everything on it is correct, and they provide the fully executed schedule and DAO back to the taxpayer. And that's what the taxpayer uses for their tax return. They give that to the accountant. If there's a reallocation, then they'll receive a second schedule and DAO. And they give that to their accountant as well. So I think we are at the end and we're gonna have time for questions now, but we wanted to leave you with some resources. You'll see on your screen, there's um, the website for the Kentucky Department of Revenue and for the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky and Jerry Roll's contact information uh, for the Foundation of Appalachian Kentucky is on there as well. So feel free to reach out with any questions. Um, thanks, Jennifer. So now we're happy to um, take some questions. I'll leave this resources page up for another couple of minutes in case anybody wants to jot this information down. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and stop sharing so that so that we have a, a, a view that's more um, amenable for questions. Or Donna or Jerry, if there's anything else you all want to add, um, feel free to to jump in. Thank you so much, Jennifer um, and Heather. I wonder. Um, uh, this tax credit has been so popular since it first was enacted and it has brought in, as you all made, uh, made us aware, almost $35 million to the Commonwealth that's permanently endowed that will continue to grow and translates into um, money into communities every year forever. Um, is there any indication that there may be more tax credits available? Um, in future years? Do you have any sense of that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to know, and things change so quickly now with COVID-19 and um, some of the other um, issues going on in our, our Commonwealth and our country. Um, I do know that there was an effort among some of the different community foundations to try and ask the legislators to raise that credit amount from $1 million to a higher amount, whether that be $2 million or $5 million. Um, and, and there was an initiative that was started to try to talk to legislators about that this year, but um, who knows what, um, I, I don't know how successful they were. Obviously, it hasn't increased for this year. It's still at $1 million. And it's hard to say how much of their efforts were 
um, you know, how much of a roadblock they got because of COVID-19 and, and all of the different things that happened. But, you know, there's no indication right now that I know of that that credit amount will be increased. Um, but I do think the fact that those credits are extinguished every year so quickly and that every year there are more people who apply for the credits than are credits available makes for a very good case for the legislators to increase the credit at some point in the future. But, um, but I think, and, and I think it's definitely a nonpartisan issue that I think would get support from the legislators, but whether we, whether they feel that, that Kentucky has the budget to do that is a hard question to answer. I ask because we are in Eastern Kentucky and a place that has traditionally been underinvested with long-term kinds of investments. And I, I am, we work hard to help our communities and our donors understand that this is one way that we can put some permanent infrastructure in place to lift up the Southeastern um, communities to, to a place maybe closer to Louisville and Lexington and to get some of those amenities that are really hard to, to fund in this region. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. We're going to, well, Donna will let you know, we're gonna, this is recorded and. Yep, and we will um, try to get this up onto the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky's YouTube channel fairly quickly because we know that you're working toward a deadline. So, um, you know, I don't anticipate really needing to edit this video at all. So we'll just be able to put it up as is probably and um, uh, get that up pretty quickly to share out with um, your donors or your other board members or people that you think need to be um, informed about this. So. We've had several folks already ask about the recording, so we'll send that out um, specifically to those those targeted folks as well as everybody else. And then again, I just want to thank um, Jennifer and Heather so much. The Community Foundation of Louisville has been um, sort of a beacon for us out here. They've they've always been generous with their time and um, tools and resources, and we've learned so much from them since the very beginning of our time back in back, you know, 10 or 12 years ago. Um, and we appreciate all of their help and what they've done. And they have used this tool so effectively, we can only aspire to be as successful um, and just appreciate your partnership and your friendship so much. Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. We're happy to help anytime. And we always appreciate all the great work you all are doing as well. Yes, thanks for having us. Okay. All right, well, thank you, everybody. And I guess that ends our webinar on the Endow Kentucky Tax Credit. So everybody have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.